Having a child who's facing a life-threatening illness such as severe combined immunodeficiency can be traumatic. Dean was our first child um, and there's no family history of SCID, so it was very unexpected. Thinking about all the tasks of managing the medical care, sometimes thinking about managing mental health may seem like another task or another burden, but it's actually the opposite. My son was diagnosed with SCID at four days old from his newborn screening test, and we had never heard of SCID before. What happens with complex medical trauma, which is trauma that ensues from having a, a disease or a chronic disease that's ongoing and can be life-threatening, is that you still have to access the medical system and you still have to manage that your child might be sick sometimes and you can be triggered again by those emotions. I have a daughter with SCID. She's 11 years old and she's also deaf. And I also have a son who's nine years old and my son is her donor. He's a perfect match. My name is Jody Taub. I'm a licensed clinical social worker with a private practice in New York. I specialize in working with patients and caregivers and family members who are coping with living with chronic health care conditions. And I'm also a patient who has a primary immunodeficiency. Learning how to manage trauma responses and triggers will help you to continue to navigate your child's medical care. Five days after he was born, we got a call from our pediatrician and she said some of his blood work came back abnormal. I think every parent who goes through something like this knows you're like, as soon as you get that diagnosis or whatever the case may be, you're in like go mode and you're just kind of, your main focus is, is your child and making sure that you get the best help for them. And um, so it's, it's kind of hard to step back we were rushed to the hospital here in San Diego to be in an isolation room so we could get more tests done. In every SCID family I've ever talked to, everybody remembers that day so clearly. For me personally, I wish somebody would have told me to like, you know, just as simple as work, work on it or talk about it prior. I like I had said before, you're in that go mode immediately. And me personally um, kind of set all of that aside and put it in the back of my mind and just kind of go, go, go. I wish I would have seek help from the beginning, you know, but you're so busy trying to keep up with everything that you don't ever think of yourself. And now 11 years later, you know, you sit down and you're like, no, it's about you. While that works in the moment, as far as getting your child to where they need to be, it takes a toll on you, maybe not in the moment, but you're gonna pay for it later. You want your family to be stable and happy, and you know you don't ever want your kids to see that you're you know, sad or concerned or anything, because you pass on that vibe to the, you know, your loved ones, especially my kids. I wish somebody would have told me that because, you know, after after he had engrafted and, and he was looking good and in the clear and released from the hospital, um, it all kind of hit me and, uh, you know, I was struggling at work and uh, it was just really hard to go back into the real world um, and having not discussed anything with anybody, um, you really kind of internalize all of that and it just kind of eats at you actually had um, one of um, the social workers, um, because Nicole gets treated at uh, uh, a cancer center in New York, Memorial Sloan. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she's she stopped me and she's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm great. You know, I'm always smiling. And, um, you know, she stopped me because she knew I was going through a lot. And um, she said, but you're not okay, Myra. And then I just like broke down because she could see that in me. But, yeah. You know, again, it took me a long time, but I, I finally seeked help. Looking for a therapist or a psychiatrist can feel very intimidating and people don't know where to start. But I think if you can simplify it in the same way that you're looking for, you know, a physical health doctor is that one, all mental health professionals are trained to deal with mental health. I reached out to the counselor I had seen before and she was able to work with me um, over FaceTime 
and that worked out fantastic. And that's how I'm able to be able to talk about it now. It's it still wells up the feelings, but it's not as um, powerful as it was before. Well, you know, they in therapy they, they tell you, you know, list these items and what bothers you, and you know, the positive and the negatives, and then how to go about it, and you know, it made me feel better. And my daughter as well, you know, I think she feels better. And again, there were things that I didn't know that she was, you know, she she would tell the the psychologist things that I didn't know about, you know, that again, like. I know that she always wanted to put her to sleep, but I didn't know that you know she's scared at night or things like that, you know. There are various forms of therapy that are helpful for managing chronic health care conditions, which include cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness-based stress reduction, acceptance and commitment therapies are different modalities that help caregivers to be able to better manage their thought process and their overwhelming feelings. It's not uncommon um, if you are going through trauma that you may experience clinical anxiety and depression and, and the possibility of potentially needing psychotropic medication is an option. Go talk to somebody or join a support group or, you know, because you can, you can discuss it with your significant other as much as you want, um, but there's just some things, you know, a, a therapist, a traditional therapist could help you talk through and, and, and work out and it's um, something I actually learned in counseling early on where you have to put your own oxygen mask on before you can help somebody else and that's exactly what we knew we had to do we had to do to take care of our son. Be introspective about things and it doesn't have to be you know traditional therapy um, it doesn't have to be joining a support group um, it can be any number of things. Everybody's, everybody's different, everybody handles, handles it differently. There are many mental health resources that parents can use outside of just supportive mental health services. Some of these include self-care, mindfulness and meditation apps, as well as mood trackers and journals. People that are, you know, especially my culture, you know, like we don't, you know, it, it's just, a big deal, I guess, if you call a psychologist, <laughs> but it's not bad. It's not a bad thing, you know, you need the help. Having taken care of my own mental health has helped my family and my son because even now when we have to go to doctor's appointments and he's two and a half, I'm calmer. I don't get the, the panic that I used to. As a provider, if you're able to bring this up to your patients and caregivers and let them know that man managing mental health is just as important as managing your physical health, you're reducing stigma and you are a trusted part of their care team and coming from you, they may feel validated to make that step and move forward. Don't be afraid to ask for help in any capacity. So whether it be as small as you need your friends, your family, your neighbors to make you dinner that night, whatever it may be, ask for help.